What prompted you to move today? Good, good morning, uh, Rish. There were a number of factors which supported a further relaxation of the policy rate. The continued dovish monetary policy stance we are seeing amongst the major economies as well as a number of uh, key emerging market economies. And we are having, uh, we have an output gap. Uh, clearly, we have a flexible inflation targeting regime and within that, stabilizing the output gap uh, is one of the key objectives. Um, and there are both global and domestic headwinds to growth. So that was another reason that influenced the monetary, uh, monetary board. Credit and monetary expansion is below where we would ex were expected to be. Uh, the trade deficit has been contracting and the external sector is broadly stable. And we see inflation uh, well anchored and the outlook looks stable as well. And there has been a slowing. We've had a sig significant reduction, a downward adjustment in short-term interest rates. And we see that is slowing down. And in fact, in the last couple of Treasury bill options, we've seen a small increase. So all this created space, policy space for us to reduce rates. And we've been giving forward guidance that uh, we would be uh, considering further relaxation of monetary policy. Um, the, the factors on the other side were the possible fiscal slippage uh, and the possibility of, of outflows. Uh, on fiscal slippage, uh, so far yet, we don't see a major threat, though we are keeping a very close eye on what's happening on the fiscal side. And as far as outflows are concerned, we looked at a worst-case scenario uh, and we think we can manage the situation. We have about 700 million FII in our government securities. Our reserves are currently 8.3 billion. Uh, and even in a worst case scenario, you know, this is something we can manage. So taking all that together, Governor, there was a strong case to relax policy, yeah. Governor, sure, rupee is actually up from uh, the start of the year, but actually if you take a one year view, it's down about 11%. But you did mention international easing as well how much of that was responsible for your decision to move well certainly that created more policy space in a sense even last year we had muted growth but our room to maneuver as far as monetary policy uh, moving to a more accommodative monetary policy was constrained by the fact that there were uh, like other emerging market economies uh, we were experiencing significant outflows, outflow, short-term capital outflows. And that put pressure uh, um, on the exchange rate. And in that context, our, our room to maneuver on the monetary policy side was constrained. And that constraint has now been taken away, which has given us uh, the scope to be more active. But I must say that in terms of forward guidance, um, you know, we have now um, reduced interest rates twice, once in uh, May, and now, yes, today, uh, by 100 basis points in all. We've also had two SRR reductions, totaling 2.5 percentage points, and we've infused about 150 billion rupees of permanent liquidity through that. So we are now going to wait and see as to what the impact of all these measures are going to be, as well as monitor the fiscal performance carefully, as, as well as global developments prior to deciding on the future movement of monetary policy. Governor, it's Juliet so, here in have, Singapore. You've got. Sorry. Sorry, Governor, Sorry, to, yes, to step on what you were saying. Uh, you're obviously looking at the broader picture and very much moving in terms of what's going to happen down the, the track. But inflation very much below your target, 3.3% versus your target of 4.6%. So you're talking there about what you could do to further stimulate the economy. What about in terms of your GDP growth outlook for the year? So at the moment, um, we, we, have, we are projecting 3.1%. Uh, we had projected 4% growth for this year. However, as you know, we had uh, some um, uh, unfortunate developments in, in April, uh, which has made us revise our growth um, forecast downward. We are seeing recovery. I mean, uh, second quarter uh, growth, uh, it's probably going to come out at about 2.1%. Um, so, but despite that, we are now, we do see a pickup in the third quarter and fourth quarter. And fourth quarter, we have some strong base effects as well. So overall, we see the economy coming out at about 3.1% growth, uh, which is still, which still leaves an output gap, which we want to stabilize.
Yeah, are you seeing a rebound from the impact of the terror attacks? Is tourism coming back to Sri Lanka? Yes, it is. If you look at month-on-month -month figures, clearly um, the events were in April. Uh, the May figures, that was the trough. But we are seeing significant pickup um, in, in June and July. Um, um, clearly still below last year's figures and the figures that we had initially projected for this year. But our peak season is, is really from about November, December through March, really the Northern Hemisphere winter. And the bookings for that period have picked up significantly. There is some discounting going on, which will impact the eventual receipt. But we do see a, a significant recovery uh, for our main season in, in the Northern Hemisphere winter. Governor, very quickly, last question. Is the trade war having any impact on the Sri Lankan economy? Well, it, for the moment, it has actually created some opportunities. Um, our apparel exporters have picked up some uh, orders from the U.S. And we have seen one or two investors um, who are reconfiguring their supply chains looking at Sri Lanka. We expect that momentum may well pick up after our elections uh, at the end of the year. Uh, people are in a bit of a wait and see mode because of that. Uh, but what, once that is behind us, uh, we, we could benefit again from, from as Vietnam and other countries are in terms of the reconfiguring of these supply chains. Um, but having said that, if the trade war escalates and, and there's an elevation of the, the effect the ramifications of such a trade war, uh, and there is a big impact on growth, then, of course, we would be affected like everybody else.